Dear brothers and sisters, today's khutbah topic is one that I actually have not thought about in the past for a reason. A lot of times we talk about things that we can relate to at an experiential level. And the only reason this topic really came up is because I was thinking about last week's khutbah, which I'm sure most have forgotten by now about fathers. And we don't talk about fathers much because of the great emphasis on mothers in Islam. And then I was thinking about how rare it is when we talk about our fathers and our mothers, what about our grandfathers and our grandmothers? And there was another reason that got me thinking, which comes at the very end of this, inshallah ta'ala, of this khutbah, in relation to the story of Isa and Maryam alayhim salam and the family of Imran, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and blessings upon them all. And I want to talk about this for a moment, inshallah ta'ala. And again, it's really about your experience. I personally only met one of my grandparents and I was a child that was my maternal grandmother and she was on her deathbed when I met her. So I didn't have the experience of connecting to grandparents. I see the complete difference in my own children who alhamdulillah have been blessed to know three grandparents and to spend time with them. And that special bond that develops between a grandchild and a grandparent. It's a beautiful bond one of the things that is encompassed in that mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to this earth, which encompasses all of the love and, 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 and uh, mercy and compassion that we find amongst each other, even between humans and non-humans and animals with each other and so on and so forth, right? That special relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down between the grandparents and the grandchildren. And I've seen it, subhanAllah, it really dawned upon me when the first time I saw my daughter uh, meet her, well, she knows her mother, her grandmother, her great-grandmother, and her mother's grandmother. And they had one of those famous uh, sayings in, in Palestine. They say, Siti ruddi ala sittik. Grandma, listen to your grandma when you can line them all up in one row and see them, mashallah, all together. And you see the lineage passed down and you think to yourself, how beautiful is this? One person to the next person to the next person to the next person. It's special. And it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed some people with in this life to be able to experience and to be able to see. But I wanted to take it to the next level. You know, we're living in a society where honoring parents is difficult, where families are being torn apart, where, you know, to remind people to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they treat their parents. And of course, parents, how they treat their children, to remind people to honor their parents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns when they reach elderly age, don't even say to them or roll your eyes at them. Treat them with good, with goodness, excellence, show them good companionship, honor them. As we said last week, you know, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu seeing the young man walking with his father and reminding him of how to treat his father. In this day and age, it's hard enough for us to remind each other about our parents and the right of our parents upon us. But here's something that's very interesting about Islam. Though there are words in Arabic that convey grandparents and grandchild, when you look through the Quran and the Sunnah, the word ab, father, functionally in every way covers the grandfather as well. And the way um, functionally covers the grandmother in every way. And in fact, that's why you will see that in the seerah, when a grandfather refers to his grandson, he doesn't say, my grandson using you know one of the words that are prominent in different Arab cultures today. He says, ibni. And when a grandson refers to his grandfather, he says, abi. There is no distinction whatsoever because in Islam, there is no difference between how we honor our parents and our grandparents in Islam. They're literally one in the same. Functionally, legally even, in the Quran and the Sunnah, the word ab encompasses grandfather in every way. The word um encompasses grandmother in every way. And of course, you would not have parents without them, and you would not exist without your parents. And they too are gates of Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. So for you to honor them, to show them that love and that respect where they can easily become forgotten, easily be relegated to the background. And I'll just talk, you know, with, with all the deaths that we're seeing right now, what's the difference in your reaction? I'll start with myself. When someone says my grandmother passed away versus my mother passed away, it's almost like, well, yeah, that's expected, right? Grandparents, elderly, they're moving on. 
And we can't let that mean any less honor in our hearts or reverence in our hearts towards them. So legally, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, for example, the parents in Surah An-Nisa in regards to inheritance, the sixth of the share of the inheritance, parents by the ijma' of the ulama, the, the consensus of the scholars, includes grandparents. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the prohibitions of marriage, and he uses the word um, and he uses the word ab, and what is encompassed beyond that, it includes the grandparents by consensus of the scholars. When we talk about issues of zakah, just like you can't give zakah to your parents because you are to spend on your parents as an obligation, you can't give zakah to your grandparents because they are your parents. Okay? So it's legally even encompassed in our system. Children live long. And this is something that's really powerful about the way that we see grandparents discussed in the Quran and the Sunnah, whether it's the stories of the prophets of old or the story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a human element to that, that when grandparents speak about their grandchildren, they don't have the same ideas or dreams for their grandchildren in regards to seeing them all the way through the way that they do for their children, for their own children. Usually the tone in the Quran and the Sunnah is in regards to the vision that they have for their grandchildren, in regards to being deeply vested in their success, in their righteousness, in their salah. And they're continuing the legacy of what they had hoped to foster in their own families. And so, for example, Millata Abikum Ibrahim. This is the religion of your father, Ibrahim. The English translation will say grandfather. This is the religion of your father, Abraham, your father, Ibrahim. And when Ibrahim said, Rabbi Habili min as Oh Allah, grant me from the righteous, he didn't expect what was coming his way. Right? A child or two in his lifetime that could give him company. Not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Ismail and Ishaq and many other children, but he lived to see Ya'qub, his grandson, and enjoyed the presence and seeing the righteousness of his grandson Ya'qub alayhi salam. So subhanAllah, I mean, it was the expectation that he had that they will grow up to be honorable and continue the legacy of Ibrahim, the legacy of Abraham. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted him with something further. But that's what's talked about. That's what's described. Similarly, the way the Prophet ﷺ loved Al-Hasan wal Hussein, he would call them his children. Abnai, my two sons, when they would come to him and they would jump on him. And the Prophet ﷺ, if he was giving a khutbah, what an amazing grandfather he is, right? He would see those two. He would get down from the menbar in the middle of a khutbah, pick up his two grandsons, sit down and give the rest of the khutbah with Hassan and Hussein on his lap. His two sons. And when he held up his son, Hassan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what did he say? Inna ibni hadha sayyid. This son of mine is a leader. This son of mine is a leader. And it may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yusliha bihi fi atan azimatan min al-muslimin that Allah will bring together two large warring groups amongst the Muslims through this son of mine, this leader of mine. Prophet ﷺ was seeing the success of Al-Hassan. He loved Al-Hassan. He loved Al-Hussein. He loved his grandchildren. It was the joy of his day وسلم, to run in and open his blessed garment alayhi salatu wasalam, and, his, and his grandchildren would run to him and he'd do this to them. He'd put them under his cloak alayhi salatu wasalam, and hug them and kiss them. And even some of the companions, they saw the Prophet وسلم, the way he'd kiss Al Hassan wal Hussein so much. And one man says, Ya Rasulullah, I have 10 of them. I've never kissed any of them. Like it's Ayyab. I've never done that, right? What is this kissing of your grandchildren like this, right? The, he was a Bedouin. He didn't have that culture. And the Prophet said, What can I do with a man who has no mercy in his heart? It's a special bond. But the Prophet talked about the future, the continuation, the extension of that righteousness. I have big dreams for you. Not in the way that I have big dreams for my children in the sense of company and, and getting to enjoy that particular bond of a parent and a child, but that you'll be an extension of goodness. And that's where, subhanAllah, you see the dua, the supplication of a grandparent. And I really want to stick to this for a moment. The dua of a parent for or against their child is accepted, right? Except unless it's dhulm or tughyan, oppression or abuse or, or you know something of that sort. But the, dhul, the, the dua of a, of a walid 
of a father or a mother for or against their child is accepted. And that includes your grandparents too. Their dua for you or against you is accepted. And this is where this came to my mind, subhanAllah, in the last few days. The interesting dimension of the grandmother of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. The grandmother of Jesus. Right? So right now, obviously, when Christmas season comes, you know, we talk about who Isa alayhi salam was in Islam to introduce that element of, you know, Isa alayhi salam's importance to us, right? And then Maryam comes up. And Maryam alayhi salam holds such a high position in Islam and we talk about her nobility, the fact that she's mentioned by name in the Qur'an even more than the Bible. Her name is mentioned, the whole chapter named after her. All the things we talk about Maryam alayhi salam. What about the grandmother? The grandmother. And this is really powerful. You know why? Because her name, the wife of Imran, is not mentioned in the Bible or in the Qur'an. The name is not mentioned. She's, according to Christian traditions, they'll say Saint Anne. And Muslim scholars you know, would, would say Hinna, which matches Anne, right? To, to describe her, that was her name. But all of that is, for the most part, just you know, relaying narrations. But her name is not mentioned in the Qur'an or in the Bible. But her dua for her offspring is. And what did she do when she was pregnant? And she said, إِذْ قَالَتْ امْرَأَةُ عِمْرَانِ رَبِّ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِي مُحَرَّرًا O oh Allah, I dedicate what is in my womb entirely to your service. فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So accept it from me, you alone are truly the all-hearing and the all-knowing. فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى And then she gave birth to her child and she said, Oh Allah, I gave birth to a girl. Her expectation was not what are the people going to say. It wasn't about, you know, boys are better than girls. It was that she particularly wanted to have a son to dedicate to ibadah, to the, to, to the worship, to the temple, to all these things. And now I have a girl and she's not going to have that same opportunity. She's not going to be able to do that. And some of the scholars mentioned that she meant a nabi, that she, that she was hoping to give birth to a prophet, to continue the legacy of prophets from Bani Israel. رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى And she gives birth to a girl. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعْتُ وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ After she gave birth to this girl, and Allah knows what she gave birth to, and the girl is not like the boy, but at the same time did she just say, oh, well, there's no ibadah, she's not going to be accepted. They're not even going to let her into the masjid. They're not going to give her any space. She's not going to be able to speak. She's not going to be able to worship. What did she say? She said, you know what? Inni I'm pleased. I've named her Maryam. I've named her Maryam, a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I seek refuge in you, O oh Allah, for her and for her offspring, rajim, from the accursed devil. If this woman just had Maryam, <laughs> what an incredible legacy to leave on this earth. A perfect woman, an example of ibadah, a worshiper in herself. وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ خَيْرُ نِسَاءِ زَمَانِهَا All of the ahadith. This devout worshiper perfected her iman. If the only thing, I mean, having one Maryam, Allahu alam, how would you compare that to generations of people in terms of the ibadah that came, the worship that came from Maryam? But she said, And any children she has, also from the shaytan. SubhanAllah, when she held her baby, who would have thought that her grandson will be Isa alayhi salam? As pious, as privileged, as elevated in the rank of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Isa alayhi salam is. But you know what? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, Isa alayhi salam benefited from her dua. How did Isa benefit from her dua? We know that she benefits, obviously, from the good deeds that were done by Maryam, the good of Isa alayhi salam, some of which is still to come when Isa alayhi salam descends upon us once again. But you know what? SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ said, every single child is born and the shaitan pokes them. Shaitan pokes you when you're born. Illa Maryam. Except for Maryam and her mother, 
when Maryam's mother said, wa inni u'idhuha bika wa dhurriyataha min shaytan rajim. They were protected from the shaytan. That's how powerful the dua of a grandparent is. And so where we have a hard time even reminding people of the virtue of their parents, let's remind ourselves to honor our grandparents as well. And that's a form of honoring our parents. And to seek the dua when you serve the elderly. And this is something that nurtures a good character in your own heart, in your own life. When children grow up and they, they show respect and honor to their grandparents and serve them. This is something that nurtures akhlaq, nurtures good character and faith. The beauty of that grandparent saying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be the best of this life and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be pleasing to him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be at the service of all of those who he has demanded that we be of service to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor us and honor those who came before us and honor those who come after us and forgive us for our shortcomings. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ad al-Muslimin. Fastaghfiru inna huwa al-Ghafur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو كريم وتحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم وتحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعم ما تصنعون وقيم الصلاة